Hi, my name is Mike Dillard, and this is a Self Made Man, the podcast for those who want to leave their mark on the world and create a legacy of honor, integrity, and achievement in every aspect of your life. I'm glad you're here, and once again, it is time to forge your destiny. Ketosis and the keto diet. We've all heard about it at one point or another over the past few years from people like Tim Ferriss and Dave Asprey, who praise all of its potential benefits from increased mental clarity to rapid fat loss and even curing cancer. But I think it's a safe bet that most of us don't really understand this subject. Well, today we're joined by my good friend Caleb Jennings, who's going to help us get a real understanding of ketosis, how it works, and how you can benefit from it. Like Tim and Dave, Caleb's biggest passion in life is biohacking. For the past 10 years, he's turned himself into a human guinea pig as he's sought to pull out the highest levels of performance that he can out of his mind and body. So we're going to start with the basic definition of ketosis and its benefits, and then we're going to dive into some of the biggest questions that you probably have about the subject. For example, do those instant keto supplements actually work? How do you know if you're in ketosis? What should you eat and what foods do you need to avoid? And how do you get your body to start burning fat as fuel instead of carbs and much, much more? If you're into improving your health and increasing your mental performance, this is an episode you do not want to miss. So please help me welcome Caleb Jennings. Mr. Caleb Jennings, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So I assume you are... uh, Calling in from your beautiful home in uh, Vancouver, Canada. Beautiful BC up here. It's getting a little bit dark and rainy, but uh, the sun was shining yesterday. Might have a few more days of it to enjoy. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, just a quick piece of trivia. Caleb uh, has been a great friend of mine for almost a decade, and he's the, uh, the one who got me up on a snowboard for the very first time in Whistler. I can't believe that was probably like nine or 10 years ago now. And which was super fun and kind of sent me down that path. So it's been a hell of a ride, brother. And getting to watch you do your thing in the biohacking world has just been absolutely amazing. And uh, I'm super stoked about our show today. Thanks so much, man. Great memories from then. And you rocked it out. Like you really dove in and committed to that and carving those turns. And I know you felt some pains and muscles you never expected you had, but you did a great job. I was like, I appreciate it, but it doesn't take a lot of effort to fall down a mountain. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, we are here today to dive into the topic of ketosis. And this has obviously been the rage for about a year, year and a half now. I've read a lot of posts, you know, from Tim Ferriss, listened to podcasts, Dave Asprey stuff. And yet at the same time, I'm not exactly sure what it is, how to get into it other than I always hear, hey, you know, be careful. It's really easy to fall out of ketosis, really hard to get into ketosis. And then and then what the benefits are. We know we had a uh, another phys- physician on the podcast here last year who's really a huge endorser of a plant-based diet. And he didn't really even, I don't think, understand what actual ketosis was. And I know there's a couple of different forms of it. But you're a huge proponent. You've come out with an entire course on it recently. And you, more than anyone else, just FYI, everybody, Caleb is one of the most dedicated, lifelong biohackers that I've ever met. He's been doing this as long as I've known him. He takes a really scientific approach to it, and he does not really have an agenda other than to like optimize his body and his life and to share what he learns with others. So I really take what you have to share with a huge amount of respect, and so I'm glad you're here to kind of shine some light on this subject matter for everybody. Thank you so much, man. It's, it's a huge, huge topic right now, and there's some really key differences and nuances and distinctions that once you know them, those things that are really hard people are talking about are actually become very easy and lifelong sustainable. Well, let's start at the top. What the hell is ketosis? <laughs> what is ketosis? The top first question everyone asks that most Western docs will totally freak out on you over uh, because they confuse it with ketoacidosis, which is not something you want to have to deal with and is usually limited primarily to type 1 diabetics uh, with insulin issues and the pancreatic issues and such. What we're talking about here is ketosis, you know, ketogenic diet or lifestyle and nutritional co- ketosis specifically. Now, nutritional ketosis is a state of optimal performance from a blood sugar perspective, from a mitochondria perspective, you know, little powerhouses inside our cells that provide us with all the energy we need from our food if you're eating the right stuff. And to achieve a state of ketosis, you need to essentially be on, you know, a more high fat, you know, high quality fat diet. 
uh, moderate to low proteins and low to no carbs. You know, each person's different and there's different ways to get into it like that. And usually we ideally measure it via blood ketones, right? So it's a specific measurement of the blood. There are other ways that are a little bit fallible that I don't like to rely on as much. And the blood ketones seem to be the most accurate. And all this means is really that your body is in a state of lipolysis, which is breaking down fat cells and it's lysing them open, essentially unzipping the fat cells, dumping all the stuff out, amino acids, possible biotoxins, which we'll get into And these things in that process become ketone bodies, which are preferred energy and fuel for your brain, your heart, your diaphragm. Most of your organs prefer fat as fuel over sugar, which is highly oxidative. So let me get this. Let me see if I got this right. The reason you need to eat, you know, a high fat, low sugar diet is because if you're eating sugar, your body's going to use that first and, you know, obviously store whatever calories are left over as fat. It'll make you fatter. Versus if you starve your body of sugar, it's forced to use fat as fuel. Do I have that right? Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, when you, when you switch your metabolic gear, you know, it's something that is interesting because every baby born on planet earth is born in a state of ketosis, right? So we've all actually already been in ketosis and we all go through it throughout our lives, mostly without knowing it. But once you become aware of it, you can identify the boost in performance for your brain, your focus and productivity, your metabolism upregulating. Uh, hormone function improving, and so many other different aspects of biology. And you're essentially just burning fat as fuel. You know, that is the fuel source for your body's energy naturally day to day, which also helps regulate your blood sugar and insulin sensitivity and all these different aspects of, you know, the holistic system that is our body in nature in terms of optimizing all cellular functions of performance. You know, those are the root causes of a lot of disease and disorders these days is metabolic dysregulation. You know, we slap a label like metabolic X syndrome on it or something. And because doctors don't really know what's going on. And yet we've seen so many people around the world with beautiful life changing stories of burning off a lot of weight, putting on a lot more muscle, having more endurance and strength and stamina and overcoming some severe chronic issues that people and doctors before told them were impossible to change. So the next question is, oh man, you mean I just get to eat fatty foods and barbecue all day long and I'm going to be healthy and live forever? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, at the same time, a lot of this is confused with Atkins as well. People, so when people hear ketosis or hear paleo, they're like, oh, that just means I get to eat as much steak as I want. Right. So what's the, the healthy way to go about this? Yeah, the healthy way, you know, a lot of people get this confused with Atkins and with various other, you know, paleo or primal approaches. And the, the catch there is the protein. And protein's awesome. We all need it. But if you have too much, you trigger a process in the body. It's a fancy science term, but don't be scared by it, called gluconeogenesis. And that's the process of your body taking excess protein and turning it from proteins, breaking it down into carbs and sugars via your kidneys. And when you overdose on protein, you're going to be kicked right out of ketosis, you know. So when people are talking about it's hard to get in and easy to get kicked out, uh, all that really means is you have to find what the sweet spot is for you to stay in the level of ketosis you need without going too high or low to sustain that fat burning and choosing fat as a primary fuel. So though barbecue is awesome, you know, there's a lot of sugars in it. If you overdo it on the protein side, it's going to kick you out. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make. So what... What would qualify? What do you eat on a daily basis if you're going to get into ketosis? So with that, you know, I love to weave in, this is why I refer to it as biohacked ketosis, because we're, we're taking the power of biohacking and stacking all these really cool strategies and, and tech and supplements or whatever you may have it and dialing that into supporting your body in a state of ketosis, you know, and a ketogenic meal plan of sorts that you can design ideally for yourself. Uh, there's no one size fits all. And I believe that's a thing in the past these days. You need to figure out what is a one size fits you kind of a plan. So my daily food intake, you know, is uh, higher on the fat side. I'd say, you know, 75 to 80 percent of my calories daily come from fats, high quality fats like and coconut. Uh, yeah, I was going to I was going to ask you, I think it's really important to explain to folks what your versions of fats are, because I think a lot of folks are just going to literally think like animal fat. Mm hmm. Yes. You know, certain animal fat, when derived from high quality proteins and high quality animal products, 
you know, local grass fed, grass finished, you know, uh, sustainably raised, you know, ideally them living their natural lifestyle because that's how we all evolved. Uh, we just gunked it up with the big food industries and factory farming. So if you get a really high quality animal fat, that is an incredible source of good fat, um, you know, good quality steaks, uh, good quality ribs, good quality lamb, uh, salmon, a lot of the good fish that are low in mercury, uh, heavy metal toxin and stuff. So those are really, really good sources of animal based proteins and fats. And then you've got coconut oil. You've got coconut milk. You've got, uh, for those that can tolerate dairy, you've got high quality sources of grass fed butter, of, you know, ghee, of, you know, different aspects like colostrum is a super nutrient dense power packed food for those that, you know, have the enzyme to digest dairy. Although some people might want to avoid dairy the first week or two, they dive into it just to give their bodies some time to enter into it gently without stimulating too much mucus production or anything. So uh, avocados are another huge one. There's so many amazing fats and good oils. Uh, the list goes on on that. And really, you just find out what tastes best to you and what feels best. And if you're testing your blood, you'll know what's supporting you in that. So let's let's walk through this process, right? Let's just say you were going to help me turn towards this diet. We're going to start tomorrow morning. What does this look like? Ideally, we jump in with uh, intermittent fasting, right? And this means that, you know, when you go to bed tonight, you're just going to stop eating, ideally between 6 and 8 p.m., at least three hours before you, uh, before you go to sleep. And then from there, you're starting to go into the fasting stage all throughout the evening, okay? Now, the fasting stage, you're already starting to burn some fat. You've got, you know, fatty acid transport occurring, some really beautiful things that are super geeky that you don't need to know how to work right now, but they're just happening because your body knows what to do on a genetic level. Now, when you wake up in the morning, you're in what we call a fasted state. You know, what is breakfast other than the word break fast, right? So, what you do is you just essentially support yourself with a high quality fat. Um, you know, our good friend Dave Asprey, he's got Bulletproof Coffee, which is very popular. Um, I've got, you know, what I call an uber fat tea recipe for those that prefer tea over coffee. But essentially, you're supporting yourself with high fats and no actual proteins, carbs or sugars in that first window of the morning. And sometimes it'll take a little while to get adapted, but I would essentially have you on, you know, either Bulletproof Coffee or an uber fat tea of sorts, or you can straight up crack open a can of organic coconut milk with ideally no guar gum in it and put some stevia into it, maybe some colostrum and then mix it up. And you've got this giant fatty cup of deliciousness that you can sip on through the morning. And that's going to give you the fuel that your brain needs to fire and function at an optimal level to start off. So you're going to take that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, well, what until what time, you know, until you you have a solid meal, right? Yeah. So, you know, normally a lot of people stick to the kind of 16, eight, you know, hour window. So you'll basically try to eat all of your meals and calories within an eight hour period and, you know, fast for the other 16 hours of the day. That's a general rule of thumb and it may differ based on each person's unique biology. But I actually go through, I'll go through till three or four in the afternoon, super stoked and not needing any food whatsoever and barely get the twinge of hunger. And from there I'll eat, you know, all my calories in the next few hours and be set for the entire day. So whenever I try to do this, you know, there's uh, Dave's actually come out with these ready-made uh, boxes, essentially, of Bulletproof Coffee you can buy at Whole Foods now, which is great because I didn't have the patience to make that stuff. So, uh, you know, they're little to-go cans, essentially. Uh, they taste great. I just started buying them last week. And I've tried to do this. I've, I've been doing the, the fasting deal for a while, meaning I always eat dinner around between 5 and 6 at night. And then I eat when I wake up in the morning, probably around eight, between eight and nine o'clock. And I've been trying to do the bulletproof deal where I'm just having that coffee. But uh, at this stage, I do have kind of that craving for either carbs or I get kind of lightheaded and foggy, mm -hmm. which is a real challenge because then I can't, I don't feel like I can work, uh, which is my most productive time to get that done, which is in the morning, right? So... What do you, what do you, what's going on and what do you recommend to, to break through that? So ideally when you become fat adapted, which, you know, on average takes about six weeks or so, some little bit less, some a little bit more. And that's when you get into those zones of high focus, high productivity, uh, because your body has switched the metabolic gearing from burning sugar as primary fuel source to fat as a fuel source. Mm. And you're, you're acclimated to that. Okay. I mean, you got to understand we're reversing, you know, roughly 12 to 15,000 years of adaptation to the agricultural world and grains and sugars and stuff like that. 
we're reversing all of that <laughs> over time in our genetics and DNA and tapping into the previous state that we were all essentially in for most of the generations. So it might take a little bit of time. So be patient with it. And what you're experiencing in the morning with, you know, lethargy, foggy mind, anything like that, usually that actually comes down to other issues that you may or may not be aware of, right? So you may have some parasitic infections in your gut. Uh, you may have a viral infection could be that you have a high level of heavy metal toxicity or mold toxins, right? These biotoxins that accumulate in us because we live in just, you know, first world industrial age culture, they're surrounding us, they're in our homes, they're on our skin, they're in our food and our soils. And we all have something going on like that. So if your body isn't getting that out properly and detoxifying that properly, you're going to experience that because your body's craving different elements, different minerals and nutrients that you may be deficient in to get you to the point where it knows, okay, when I get these you know, sugars or carbs or proteins, I'll feel good and have some energy to run. So when you optimize your mitochondrial function, what happens is your cells are like, oh, there's some great calories from fats. I'm going to use those as fuel. And that's where you'll dial into that, that good flow with it. So is there anything I can do temporarily to, you know, I, I'm assuming mine has more to do with like insulin sensitivity levels mm -hmm. than, than anything else. And as I'm kind of making that transition. And so is there anything I can do to, or foods that you would recommend that I could eat to kind of help break through that? Because if it gets bad enough, I just give up and I eat eggs or bacon or toast or something to just get me back into a functional state where I can get work done. Exactly. And maybe you need to do that for a little while in the beginning and, you know, use the fasting on the tail end of the day. So stop eating, you know, a few hours before you go to bed and start there. And then you can eat a really delicious, high fat uh, and moderate protein breakfast, you know, uh, like with some egg yolks and bacon, um, you know, different coconut milk, different coconut oil. And you can, uh, you know, mix that with the Bulletproof coffee or another drink. You just have to understand that this could be a different set of biology at work when you're incorporating that food. But if that's what you need to get you through, you start there. And from that, you essentially can dial your body into adapting to that state. And your insulin will take a bit of time to regulate. And if you have a lot of high estrogens in your body, um, especially as men, those things are actually going to boost our insulin resistance quite a bit and usually cause those cravings first thing in the morning. Interesting. So how do you measure the whole the whole ketosis thing i know there's little blood meters and test strips almost like you know you're testing for for your insulin levels it is is it a similar process where you got to prick your finger in it but it's just uh you know a different measurement Exactly. Yeah. Same, same, but different. And, and this you know, really touches on another aspect that is also supportive in the mornings for you too. You know, there's a handful of uh, ketone supplements out there, what we call exogenous or external ketone supplements. And you'll notice this with the testing. Okay. There's one that I really love called Perfect Keto. You know, I have no affiliation with them. I just really enjoy their product and you'll see a lot of different products out there. I've you know, done the testing blood wise with them. So I know they work really well. And that would be something good for you specifically to you know, add in in your morning routine to, to boost those ketone levels up and train your body in that sense. Uh, just know that, you know, supplementation should be supplementation and not relied on for life, ideally. And we're trying to just optimize from food as the foundation. So for the testing, the blood measurement is the best. And there's a few blood monitors, you know, a, at, you know by Abbott, there's the Precision Extra, uh, XTRA, and the Precision Neo device, which I think is the updated version. There's also one I came across recently uh, called Keto Mojo. And that's also a great blood ketone monitor with, you know, cheaper strips for it, which is a, a complaint a lot of people have. Now, when you're doing the blood measurements, you're getting the best data you can, but you have to be aware that if you are using any type of exogenous ketone, so let's say you're guzzling down, you know, Dave's brain octane oil or some MCT oil, let's say you're taking, you know, a supplement that is a ketone based salt, you know, it's going to boost your levels temporarily. But what we want to see is your morning fasting levels. You know, so when you wake up in the morning before you've had anything at all, you want to take a reading and see where you're at. And that's going to help you. Now, on the blood meter, when you're at, you know, 0 0.5 is the generally accepted realm of entering into ketosis. And you'll notice different levels throughout when you start paying attention to how your body and your brain feel. You'll find different levels work better for you for your morning work, focus and productivity, for doing other things like math, for going on stage, for performing in sports of various kinds. And you'll really be able to figure out what levels you can get yourself to and eventually just call them out. You'll know when you're at 1.8 on the ketone level monitor just by feeling it. So 
what other measurement, what's the window you're looking for? You said it essentially starts at 0.5 and it goes to what? What's ideal? You know, what's ideal, and this is a big area of controversy, is, you know, what's ideal is what's ideal for you. And, you know, I operate really well between the uh, 0.8 and the 1.4 range for certain cognitive function activities. And then the higher my ketone levels go, let's say between two and four, uh, depending on the type of activity, I find work really well. Okay. And a lot of people think, go ahead. No, no, sorry. So it's like, okay, that's, that's good because I, 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 I didn't know the range. Yeah, the ranges can go all the way upwards of, you know, six and seven. You don't want to really go past that, though, and there's no need to because once you get past 10, 12 and above, you're going into dangerous ketoacidosis levels, which Mm -hmm. is really, really hard to do if, you know, unless you have diabetes of some sort or other uh, issues metabolically that will shift you into that gear. So more is not better in this. Uh, Sometimes actually you'll function better at a lower level of ketosis, which is a lot easier to maintain over time, especially while traveling. So, you know, a couple of years ago when this started to get popular, that supplement company came out called Prove It, right? Mm-hmm. The Prove It Keto OS powder packets. And I had a bunch of people trying to, to, to send them to me and I tried it. And, you know, it's just a, a mix. You drink with water and you drink it and it's supposed to put you into ketosis. And I want to know, is that actually possible? Let's just say I had a plate of pasta or a sandwich and now I'm going to drink this drink and I'm magically like into ketosis and it wiped, wiped <laughs> that clean or, you know, so let's talk about that real quick. And then I've got another question for you. Yeah, it's, you know, you'll see a lot of different supplements coming out like that. And, you know, I've, I've tested, you know, keto os products before I've tested so many on the market. And in terms of the magic ability to put you into ketosis, the answer is a double edged sword. The answer is both yes and no. What I mean by that is essentially you can load up on carbs, but if your body's processing all those sugars, you're not going to hit too high a level on the ketone monitor, even if you take that supplement. But if you do take that supplement, you will notice your levels boosting. Now, if you remember when I was talking about the blood ketone monitoring earlier, uh, in there, the exogenous or external source of these ketones can kind of gunk up the readings a bit. So you think you're in ketosis and according to your blood level, you are, which most people are going to be like, yay, I'm in ketosis. I'm burning fat as fuel. What you don't know about it is that the deeper therapeutic benefits and the metabolic enhancements really come from endogenous or internal ketosis, which is what we refer to in a state of nutritional ketosis, where you're using the fat as fuel from the foods you eat and your own body stores to produce the ketone bodies that register on the blood meter. And the supplements are just that. They're supplementary. They can help you transition into it. They can help you reduce what we call the dreaded keto flu uh, within that. And they can help you get through certain times where maybe you just haven't prepared properly or don't have access to some really good high fat foods. But in those cases, I actually prefer to just fast in general because of all the benefits associated with it. Yeah. And you know, what really irked me is that they're selling these things for like seven, eight, nine bucks a piece. And, you know, you read the, the label and all it is is powdered MCT oil. Yeah, powder MCT oil, um, and usually it depends on the source, but some do have what we call beta hydroxybutyrate or BHB, which is uh, you know very touted in butter. You know, it's uh, the super high amount of BHB in butter is what also helps fuel your ketogenic process as well. So some do add it to that, and yeah, some are just straight up you know MCT powders. So, you know, certain chain fatty acids on there, which again will get you the result on the blood, but it's not real. It's it's not accurate in the sense of your body in a state of ketosis and reaping all the benefits. So, well, help me understand that, right? Because I'm getting a little confused on. Okay, I okay, I think I figured it out. <laughs> That's why you said in the beginning it's so important to check your levels when you've been fasting the first thing in the morning when you wake up because the moment you have a product like this or essentially put anything you know edible in your body that's you know fat based it's going to change the number exactly yeah okay gotcha all right so let's just you know going from this point forward let's say someone's practicing this they've made their diet modifications they're still kind of new in the process what should they expect What to expect with that is, you know, it's going to be challenging at first to readjust your lifestyle and you're changing your metabolism over completely to a new mode of operating, right? It's it's like installing a NOS tank in your car. Like you're going to have to get used to that extra boost of speed and adjust in that process to really dial it in. So when you start switching gears, you start burning more fat as fuel. A lot of people will talk about the keto flu, 
right? And this is, you know, essentially a detoxification process because when you kick your body into burning fat with any diet, with any approach, when you're burning fat, there's a lot of toxins, you know, a lot of biotoxins stored in the fat cells. And as they, you know, lice open or essentially as the fat cells open up and dump those in your bloodstream, your body's going to do everything it can to support you in detoxifying it. Okay. Now this is a huge area that people just kind of glaze over that is, you know, really integral to your success with ketosis because this is the point at which most people quit. And in addition to that, also be aware of your micronutrients and your minerals, your mineral ratios. For example, magnesium and potassium in particular are incredibly important because at first your electrolytes are going to get thrown a bit out of balance because your body's working in overdrive to detoxify these elements. So whether you need a supplement that's high quality for potassium or magnesium or whether you just get it from really great foods, uh, beef is an amazing source of potassium itself. And you just need it in a form that your body can work with. You know, there are certain electrolyte drinks that are pretty clean that you can support yourself with too. And you want to be hydrating like crazy. You want to be drinking a lot of good water because that's going to help flush and pass everything through the kidneys and get the liver going and help support glutathione production and really just get rid of the biotoxins that are, have been hanging around for decades. What should people expect from a weight loss perspective? It differs for everybody. Obviously can't make any claims around that. Uh, I'll share my personal experience though. And that of a few other people that I've worked with. And essentially when I first did it, you know, I was actually down in Austin and, uh, I was down there I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this ketosis experiment. So I did it for a total of nine months and I tested my blood ketone levels three to 12 times a day, every day. So I had some pretty sore fingers after all that, but really great data. And the weight loss I experienced from that in the first, it was in the first two or three months or so, uh, it was over 20 pounds. So I burned over 20 pounds you know, most of it was fat. There was also some water weight and inflammation that is a part of that as well. And you got to be aware of those things. So I, I recommend if you can find someone that is a, you know, a trained uh, therapist in, you know, DEXA scanning, DXA or DEXA, that's a really great gold standard for getting muscle composition, fat composition, bone density. So, you know, specific, you know, specifically what you're burning. And from there, you know, I went through that whole process and that's where I really became fat adapted. And ever since I've, you know, intentionally tweaked with my diet to gain more weight to then go back into acidic ketosis to burn off even more. And the most recent example of that is I dropped 16 pounds in 14 days and uh, down over 20 pounds since it went from uh, 174 to uh, 154, a little bit lower than that. But 154 is where I like to cap it because I fluctuate and stabilize around that point. It really depends on what you have to lose and also what other issues your body has to work out first in the metabolic machinery. So what does this look like for you on a weekly basis? Because I know from personal experience that you have no problem throwing down on some serious sushi. Uh, <laughs> and when I say that, I mean, I mean the rolls and the rice included. So, oh, yeah. so talk about that. Yeah. So that, that's the fun part about, you know, ketosis is a lot of people think it is a, you know, one size fits all for life kind of a thing. And it's not. It's it's a tool that we have in our toolbox of, you know, biohacking of just being human and, and like to optimize our physiology and how we look and how we feel. And so with that, I cycle ketosis. You know, I'm in it for a period of time and I function best in those modes. And I also understand that my body needs certain other elements and carbs and sugars to a certain degree to support the fluctuation of different hormones. And, you know, for men, it's a lot easier to stay in ketosis consistently. But for women, I actually don't recommend it. I, I recommend it to use very specifically and in targeted fashions to achieve their goals and to cycle in and out of it just to honor their miraculous hormone cycle and fluctuations month to month because they need very different things than we do as men. And I've got friends that are, you know, they've been in ketosis for 10 to 15 years straight and they just love it and they're just ripped, shredded beasts and brilliant people. And then I've got some other people that cycle it and some other people that kind of just do a, keto, you know, a ketogenic fast or cleanse once or twice a year. So if someone wants to pursue this and go down this rabbit hole, what do you need to get? The essentials to start off, you know, there's uh, a kind of, you know, everything is just on a spectrum. So I'll give you the, the spectrum, you know, on the far left of the spectrum, we have just, you know, food is the foundation, uh, a few simple quantification or measuring tools and uh, just a basic plan. And on the far right of the spectrum, we've got the, you know, the ex extreme biohacked ketosis with crazy tech and supplements, superfoods, nootropics and the like. So you're going to fall somewhere on the spectrum. And as you learn and grow, you'll evolve and play with different things. But just as food is the foundation, 
and you're going to want to get really high quality, good food, preferably local. Uh, farmers markets are great. You want grass fed, grass finished meats. You ideally want everything to be organic if you can muster it and have the sources to it. You want to load up on good fats and be prepared with that. You know, avocados are a great source and, you know, as well as coconut milk, coconut oil, you know, butters, ghees, grass fed, ideally with all those and just have yourself prepared in that sense. Brain octane oil and MCT oil, you know, those are really, really wonderful ones to travel with and, and pour in other food to support your levels of ketones. And from there, you want some simple measuring devices. So if you can get access to, you know, <laughs> beg, borrow or steal or buy uh, a blood ketone monitor, even for a short period of time, you'll get some really insightful data on your own body. And especially if you pair that with blood glucose monitoring. Uh, you'll learn more from that alone in the duration of time, say two to four weeks, than you will from almost any other test out there. And you'll know how you feel directly, which matters. And then you want to just have a good scale and, you know, start measuring your weight in the mornings and just focus on that and note it down. I mean, pen and paper is easy and simple. There are some fancy apps you can get that work with that as well. Um, so it really depends on how deep you want to go into it. But that's a great start. And then also just, you know, making a simple plan for each day. And I like to start with the bookends of a day. So the, how do you start your day and how do you end your day? And you can you can refine everything else in between over time. But, you know, as humans, behavior change takes a bit of time. And uh, we all know from New Year's resolutions and such that uh, we don't always stick to those agreements with ourselves. So it's good to focus on the baby steps and get started there. And just by optimizing the quality of your food, you're going to get a lot of benefits from that. And when you add other things in, uh, especially something that we haven't touched on yet, which we'll get into when you're ready, is uh, what I call the lectin connection in that sense. You're going to be dramatically changing your gut health, your neurotransmitters, your brain health, and really overhauling your metabolic machinery. So from a, from a monitoring perspective, right, I've, I'm going to imagine if somebody's into this, they want to do it, they're going to jump on Amazon, they're going to look for a monitor, is there any specific brand or type that they should buy or avoid? Yeah, in terms of uh, buying, I definitely recommend the Precision Extra. That's X-T-R-A, the kind of tried and true. We've all used it for years. Uh, that is a blood glucose and blood ketone monitor. There's also a new one that I haven't personally tested, uh, although I have seen a lot of great reports on, which is Keto Mojo. Uh, which I believe they have a lot cheaper strips. And that, that's one thing that you know people will find interesting is that in you know in Canada and US, it's a bit of a flip flop. You know, the either the device is a bit expensive and the strips are cheap, or it's, you know, cheap mm -hmm. device and expensive strips. So Keto Mojo is a pretty awesome innovation for that. However, I don't know if they just only do ketones or if they do blood glucose as well. And then there's one called the Precision Neo, which is really just an upgraded version of the extra. Not really any other different fancy stuff to it. It just looks cooler. So that's really up to you. The next thing I'm going to want is some kind of food list. These are good foods. These are bad foods, right? Mm -hmm. So that when I go to the store, I'm confident in what I should be looking for and what I should avoid. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I mentioned a few times throughout, but it's always good to reiterate, you know, local sourced, organic, you know, no antibiotics, no hormones, no pesticides. You want to avoid these biotoxins at all costs. Uh, I always recommend that, you know, especially if you're a fan of sushi and tuna and such, it's delicious. At the same time, it is some of the highest food in mercury and other heavy metals like lead and cadmium, for example. And you want to avoid these biotoxins. They can really, they're some of the most insidious dangers to our health that we face today and not a lot of light is shed on them, but thankfully more people are becoming aware and detoxifying these things can absolutely radically change your life because you could be doing everything healthy and why isn't this working for me, you might ask. And when you realize that you get the biotoxins out, you're essentially clearing the tubes in your body and telling your cells and your DNA, okay, it's time to get to work and do what you know how to do and do what you were programmed to do from, you know, the whispers of 10,000 generations within us. So that's really, really important. And on the food side, you know, think of a, just imagine a plate, right? Let's have a lot of good veggies on there. Ideally, you know, the lower carb veggies. So those ones would be some of the greens, you know, you've got, you know, chards and kales, which a lot of people like, but I want you to be aware of those that they are very high in oxalates, which can bind to calcium and other minerals in the body. Uh, and is actually part of my history uh, of a degradation in health. So go easy on them, but they are good in nutrients. And if you cook them properly, you'll get some good benefits from them. And then from there, you've got broccoli, cauliflower, you know, the cruciferous veggies are some of my absolute favorites. And, you know, one go to meal for me that I just love so much is making some cauliflower steaks and it's you know, essentially like a half a head of cauliflower and then some really awesome wild caught salmon that is low in mercury 
and wild caught. And then you've got, um, you know, if you want to add some carbs in there, depending on your carb threshold, I usually use sweet potatoes is kind of a good staple for that. And that's a big myth a lot of people think about is, you know, can't have any carbs. That's not true. You, you can have carbs just in moderation. And ideally, you do some blood testing to figure out your carb threshold. And what, what am I going to look for? Well, that's, you know, a little bit, a little bit too in the weeds. I was going to say, what am I going to look for from a, a blood perspective to know if what I just ate has taken me out of ketosis? Yeah, well, for one, you'll feel it. And for two, if you're testing your blood ketones, you'll see that you drop down below the 0.5 mark on okay. there. So you want to just, you know, very simply focus on majority of fats, moderate to low protein, depending on how sensitive you are to it, and low to no carb. And that's the general framework. And how you mix that in with the highest quality foods is what really is going to be tailored to you. Okay, awesome. Now, you know, the, the reason I wanted to get you on the podcast is because I know that a couple of weeks ago you launched you know, kind of a a training pro- program for this and for people who want to essentially get into ketosis and then take it to a couple of levels, you know, further with what you've learned from a biohacking perspective. For folks who would be interested in that, what are you covering? Who's it for? And where can they find out more? Yeah, it's, it's so much fun to be able to help people with the biohacked ketosis. The name is essentially biohacked ketosis. And I'm going to teach you how to master your metabolism. And we've got uh, a whole wonderful range of people in there. And the coaching is going to take you through the basics and the foundational aspects and principles all the way through to some really high level biohacking aspects if you want to weed those in. But even if you're just doing food alone and just want to really dial that in and get that as a life skill to have, you'll have everything you need to know in the six week masterclass. Awesome. And any uh, any other tips or any other items here on the subject matter that we have not talked about yet? You know, an important one that I really want to shed some more light on is the lectin connection. And uh, you know, we could go super deep on that. But the simple point is lectins are a plant's defense mechanisms. And there's a great book by Dr. Stephen Gundry uh, called The Plant Paradox. I highly recommend that goes deep into this. But essentially, when you realize that some you know perceived really healthy foods you've probably eaten a lot of, they are actually destroying your gut health and causing inflammation. And this is a big layer of what I'll be teaching in biohacked ketosis is that connection to things and helping your body to optimize from the ground up the inside out by figuring out what you're sensitive to or not, even if it's considered a health food. Can you give us some examples of a few of those that would probably surprise uh, everybody? Yeah, some of the most well-known ones are gluten and a lot of grain products, brown rice and uh, dairy products. You know, casein in specific is one of the highest lectins. Uh, You'll notice a theme amongst the top allergens in the world. They're actually very high in specific types of lectins. And then you've got something else that is a really, really critical one to avoid, and it's called transglutaminase. Fancy word. Essentially, it is a rising agent used in gluten-free breads and pastas. Uh, Anything that you would usually use rice or excuse me, yeast to actually rise with, they take that out because it's a rapid rising agent and it's not required by law to be labeled. So that is one of the most insidious ones and why a lot of people have gut disruption from gluten-free breads to try to, you know, get that effect in there. That's a really important one. And essentially anything that has seeds in it, you know, the it's a plant's defense mechanisms for survival and reproduction for the plant because it can't run away. So is zucchini and pumpkin and squash, all these different foods, though they have health benefits in certain regards, you may be more sensitive to them than you'd ever imagine. Uh, what about Ezekiel bread, you know, live sprouted grain breads? Honestly, one of the biggest scams in all history. Really? <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty bold and controversial statement, I know. You know, back in ancient Egypt, for example, they were very well known for the whitest bread around and all the elites of society all throughout history, all the way through the British Empire, you know, and all beyond. They all wanted the pristine, polished, whitest, cleanest, purest foods, especially when it comes to grains, because most of the lectins are contained in the hulls of these things. So brown rice is a big you know, craze in sushi. You want brown rice sushi. It's healthy. And also grains and sprouted grain breads and everything. Now, there are nutrients in these, but they are also high in lectins. So you're going to have to figure out which ones you're more sensitive to. But back in the day, they used to polish the grains off of rice. They used to you know, separate the wheat and the chaff, for example and give the clean, pure, white versions of that to the elites. And that was healthiest and least offensive to the digestive system and inflammation in the body. And they used to give the rest of the hulls and the brown rice and the the whole grains and everything else to all the peasants. And that's where, you know, disease ran rampant. Wow. I had no idea. 
That's pretty shocking. I thought, you know, I, I obviously expected the the complete opposite. <laughs> so, right? Uh, yeah, marketing will do that. Wow, that's fascinating. And obviously, what you're talking about, let, let's just be clear for folks, is there's a very, very big difference between what you just talked about as far as removing the husk and all of that stuff, and the refined breads that you would find at your local grocery store. Huge, huge differences. Yeah, it really comes down to the nuances of quality. And, you know, when you, we, as humans, we go to the surface layer. You know, we want the healthiest bread and we go for the whole grain because that's what's marketed to us. Breads in general, ideally, you, re, you essentially remove a lot of refined sugars and flours and other like products like that. You just want veggies and real good quality meats and really good high quality fats, some good fruits mixed in at the right portions that are good for you. You know, that's really all we ever need. That's what we evolved on. And the other tasty, delicious things like breads and baked goods you can have in certain moderation and still be in ketosis to a degree, but really got to pay attention to the quality and also the lectin content of those. Ah, I just thought of an amazingly important question for you, Caleb, before we end here today. What about alcohol? <laughs> what about alcohol? Uh, that one comes up quite often. And I, you know, alcohol, though, it can be fun for some is toxic to the liver and has a lot of other issues associated with it. But if you still enjoy a drink every now and then, Find out which version of alcohol digests best for you and processes best in your liver. So for me personally, it's tequila. I can process it like water. It's amazing and I don't have a hangover from it. Then again, I just rarely ever drink, uh, but still occasionally I'll enjoy one. But just know that alcohol is sugar and that will take you out of ketosis. Now, if you're a wine fan, I do uh, recommend our friends over at Dry Farm Wines because they have a certified mold free, bulletproof approved ketogenic friendly wine that's actually really delicious okay what what was the name of them again dry farm wines dry farm wines cool awesome Mm -hmm. great to know all right well one more time the name of uh the name of the product in the site where people can pick up your course this is this is a rabbit hole i'm gonna dive down in uh tomorrow in fact uh because this has been a priority in my life but i just haven't had enough knowledge to take action on it but i feel like i do after this episode so thank you you're welcome, man. That's that's my goal, and I really appreciate that feedback. Yeah, and the uh, the course name is Biohacked Ketosis, Master Your Metabolism, and it can be found at biohackedketosis.com. And for my personal self, I've got calebjennings.com, where you can kind of see what I'm up to uh, from time to time, as well as just at Caleb Jennings, that's C-A-L-E-B-J-E-N-N-I-N-G-S, uh, across all social media channels. Well, brother, thank you so much for taking the time to drop all of your knowledge on this subject matter with us. This was definitely enlightening for me, and I'm sure it was for everybody else. Uh, so I really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. And I really appreciate being able to share this with more people because it's an absolute life changer when you dial it in for yourself and really become a master of your own metabolism and your own health for life. Awesome. Well, guys and gals, if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. Go check out Caleb's website, connect with him on social media, and we will see you next week. Take care. Thank you.